Energy Media readers, everybody in Western Canada is watching OPEC Plus and their negotiations to cut production and support oil prices with great interest. And to talk about that today, we're going to chat with economist Rob McBride from Enverus in Colorado. Welcome to the interview, Rob. Hello. So give me your response, your reaction to the deal that was negotiated with OPEC Plus and possibly the U.S. Sure, happy to. I don't think my uh, view on it strays very much from what the majority of the market is thinking. And that's, this is a good thing. It's a good thing that there was all of these interests that came to the table and made a move, but it's not enough. It's not enough in the near term. In the long term, it probably is a very positive. So just under 10 million barrels per day for the next two months pales in comparison to estimates that go anywhere from 25 to 30 million barrels a day of demand destruction. So <clears throat> that definitely is going to be a problem still for the uh, market-based producers. So if we think of Canada and, and the U.S., that have gone forth and said, look, the market will determine our shut-ins. Um, we'll see if that plays out. That is going to need to happen. What we would argue here at Averis is the contango, although astronomically steep right now in the front two months of the uh, crude oil curve, is quite strong. It's not enough. You're probably going to need to see near-term prices come down into the single digit pricing for that time. The last thing I would probably add for Alberta, there probably is a glimmer of hope here because if all these players can come to the table together and agree on a cut, I might go as far as to say, hey, for the long run, that's a really good thing for the Western Canadian provinces. It may say, hey, we're not going to negative pricing, but it's still going to require players exiting the market. There probably are necessary shut-ins, necessary bankruptcies, but it is a good sign that all these players can come to the table. Now in Western Canada, particularly Alberta, uh, it's prime, it mostly heavy crude oil that gets exported uh, to the US, uh, some light, but mostly, mostly heavy crude. And so uh, can we expect that the heavy market will be affected differently than the light market? I don't have uh, data down to that level that supports me taking a view one way or the other. Um, right now, I do think all grades are equally affected because all the different destinations for storage. And honestly, that's the only problem right now is where do you put this because it's not being consumed. So uh, I, I think it's a industry wide problem at this stage. How do you think that the U.S. shale producers will be affected? I mean, we've heard, you know, for uh, probably a year and a half now that uh, Wall Street had shut off the flow of capital. A lot of the independent producers were in big trouble to begin with. And what will happen? Will we see bankruptcies? Will we see uh, acquisitions and consolidations? What's your take? I think you're going to see all of the above. And there's no doubt that it has to come. Um, if you look at the entire universe of the shale patch, it runs the gamut on well capitalized to poorly capitalized. You're going to see survivors are ones who can continue for the next several months and maintain their balance sheet without outspend. So the capital markets are closed. I can't continue to drill at these prices to maintain my production level. Then I am going into decline. So yes, 100%, some are going to fail. Some are going to be merged, acquired. Even the ones that fail, those assets need to be redistributed, either restructured in bankruptcy or acquired by somebody else. So it's definitely coming. Significant declines in total production for U.S. shale players. Some will survive, some will not. We're seeing estimates of uh, two to three million barrels a day reduction in U.S. production um, over the, uh, you know, the short term. Uh, is that fairly accurate, do you think? So far, well, we can tell that that can certainly be accurate. We haven't gotten enough reliable data. I actually think in the very near term, you're going to see that number get bigger. Um, 
right as we're speaking right now, the Texas Railroad Commission is having their all day hearing on discussing whether they will mandate a production drawdown. Um, so lots to come out of that meeting and then a lot to be digested and then maybe enacted into policy. So I think we have some time to come. So I'll circle back to me, the fastest solution to this in the near term is a collapse in the near term prices that is gonna require shut-ins or at least throttling back. Um, and I think you need more than the two to three million you're talking about. Now, there's been some talk, um, mostly in, in Alberta actually, about some kind of uh, agreement uh, to protect North American oil markets, almost uh, you know, like import quotas like we had under Eisenhower, that sort of, something like that, and to protect domestic markets for domestic producers. I, I've been very skeptical of that. I don't think they, the governments could uh, probably couldn't do it. And if they can do it, they can't do it in a timely fashion. What, I'd be curious, what's your take on it? The last thing you said would be my 100% take on it. I think everything is on the table for discussion. Um, certainly in the media and analysts world, we can conceive of everything, but you hit the nail on the head. To bring that kind of uh, policy into effect in a timely fashion to make a difference. I'm not confident that can happen. What you'll see is a back and forth between the market purist who want to say, let prices shut in the oil or the policy purists who say, Hey, let's all come to the, to the table together and work something out. So I do think those conversations will happen, but I think you're right. It may, enabling it to happen in the speed with which market prices can shut this in. Probably not. Any final thoughts, uh, Rob, on what we're going to see over the next, uh, say, one to three months? Well, I think the biggest wild card nobody knows is what are we uh, going to experience over the next couple of months with this pandemic, right? It's I, I read stats and commentary every day, and you see everything from this will be over by the end of the month, and we'll bring the economy back to we're not gonna be doing things for months on end. I think that will turn this wheel on its head as far as bringing back demand, the sooner the pandemic stops the stay at home policy. And I don't think anybody has a guaranteed answer on that at this stage. Rob, thank you very much. Really appreciate your insights and no doubt we'll be talking to you again in the near future because this story isn't gonna go away. No, 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 I'm happy to help anytime.